welcome home Coach Michael Loxley. This is an extremely exciting day for Maryland and especially our football community. I also want to say welcome to Kia, Mike's lovely wife, his daughter, Corey, and also his in-laws, Charles and Burnett Blanford. Thank you guys for being here today. I would also like to acknowledge some special guests who are in attendance with us today. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to acknowledge President Wallace Slow, Maryland Senate President Mike Miller, <laughs> Chair of the Board of Regents, Dr. Linda Gooden, and finally, Chancellor of the University System of Maryland, Dr. Bob Corrett. Welcome. As I look across this wonderful facility, this historic Cole Field House, it is a true testament to Mike, by your attendance here, that he is exactly what we needed for our community. Mike is ingrained in the very fabric of who we are as a state and who we are as Terps. He embodies the spirit of one Maryland. As we all know, this has been a difficult season for our team. They deserved someone who could bring us together. Someone who understands what they have gone through. Someone who can help them continue to heal after the tragic passing of their teammate, Jordan McNair. In hearing from so many of his former players, and when I say many, Mike, it must have been thousands, it was clear that Coach Loxley doesn't just consider himself a coach while the student athletes are here. He's their coach for life. And I know that he will continue, as we all do, to put their health, safety, and welfare at the forefront of what he does. I also know this. Coach Loxley will continue to build upon the outstanding job that Matt Canada did in supporting our student athletes. And I want to take a moment to thank Coach Canada, his staff, and all of our support staff for the hard work and the terrific job they did this season. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> During the process, what stood out to me most about Coach Loxley was two things. One, his heart, and two, his humility. These are the values that he will apply as he helps to develop our student athletes to leaders in our community. And we are excited, extremely excited, for how he will shape our program. Now, we all talk about Mike as this great recruiter, and he's known to be one of the best in the country. But not, let's not forget he is just as talented as a coach. And as much as it pains me to say and mention this team's name, I have to give credit where credit is due. Alabama has been a long storied football program with a rich history. But under Mike's leadership, their offense reached heights they had never imagined. In fact, they set four new records on the offense this past year. Those records include Most points scored, most total yards, most passing yards, and most passing touchdowns, all of which Mike is bringing to us at Maryland. And I have to say, as much as I hate to say this, I watched last week as Mike and his prolific offense beat up on my alma mater for the second time in as many years and that hit home those true coaching skills. When Coach Loxley was awarded the Frank Boyles Award for the nation's top assistant coach, 
he eloquently talked about why he got into coaching. He talked about growing up in D.C., the role his coaches played in filling a void in his life, and how they molded him in the person he has become today. This is the heart of why we do what we do in collegiate athletics and the heart of why Coach Loxley is our new head coach. We have the opportunity to mold future leaders in our community and to change lives, one student at a time. Coach Loxley, Kia, Corey, Charles, Burnett, and all of the Loxley family, we are excited to have you. We are thrilled that you will be leading our program into the future and to even greater heights. So without further ado, let's welcome home Coach Michael Loxley. sure feels good to be home, man. It feels great to be back in the DMV with my family, all my friends, all the people that showed up here for me today. I can't tell you guys enough how this is a dream come true for me, to be the leader of the Maryland Terrapin football family. Uh, before I get started, I got a lot of thank yous, and I you know, one of the things I learned from the great coach Nick Saban is that every thank you comes with an IOU. And I owe a lot of people, um, starting with my wife, Kia, who's been my coach. Um, we've had a tough year, year and a half, uh, losing Miko. And she has been a rock star and been there to support me uh, through that journey, and I can't thank her enough for all of her support. My daughter, Corey, big-time soccer player from Auburn who took time out of her schedule to come up here. I love you to death. I appreciate you being here. And all the rest of my family, my in-laws, g Mon, G-Dad, it's great having you guys here, Jeff, Luke. I also want to thank Dr. Lowe. Uh, for having faith in me to, to lead this program. I want to thank the Chancellor of the University of Maryland System, the Chair of the Board of Regents, obviously Senator Mike Miller, Athletic Director Damon Evans for your faith and belief in me, the members of the search committee. I got to thank Coach Saban. You know, I just spent three years of my 28 years in this business coaching under a guy that I feel is the greatest coach in the history of college football, if not football alone. And I just spent three years saturating and winning and seeing what it's like to be done right. And I can only hope that I can take just a little bit of what I've learned from Coach Saban the past three years to implement and install here at the University of Maryland. I also want to thank everyone. We got a bunch of high school coaches that I've known, former players, Students that I've met, Jose, the best cleaning man in the business, uh, who's taken care of uh, the, that Gossett team house for a long time. All the supporters of the football program, the coaching staff here, the current staff here, Matt Canada for the great job he did keeping this thing together, and all of the campus leaders and community leaders across the campus for uh, the job that you guys have done supporting these players. Um, there's one person in particular that I have a tremendous uh, relationship with, and it means the world to me that he would be here uh, to celebrate this joyous day, my good friend Marty McNair. Marty, where you at? I appreciate you, Marty, being here with me, you know. And, and I, I, I got a text from Tanya, and I know she wanted to be here, and I appreciate you guys. Uh, taking part in this this joyous day for me and my family and just so everybody this is uh, Marty and my relationship goes back a long way and our kids went to school together we both just have tragically lost our kids and 
I have been a mentor for Marty, and Marty has been a sounding board for me the last year and a half as we've uh, worked through dealing with the emotions and the toughness of, of losing a child. And, man, Marty, you and Tanya are rock stars, and I really appreciate you guys taking the time out, you being here to help me celebrate me coming home, man. It means the world to me. You know, this is a dream job for me. My best friend in the whole world, Lawrence Brown, is over there. And Lawrence and I used to spend a lot of time in the Coldfield House parking lots. And I can't tell you the stories of why we were in those parking lots. But uh, we attended as many of those basketball games that we could. You know, going over into Maryland Stadium and having an opportunity. Grew up rooting for the Terps. And if you know anything about the Terps, man, in the mid-'80s, they were, they were a tough, tough team, and uh, I grew up loving the Terps, and this dream job for me, I've always wanted to be a Terp, and I wasn't good enough football player coming out of Baloo High School, so I settled with being a Towson Tiger, and it's a Towson State Tiger. I know Dr. Corrett is here. He actually signed my, uh, my uh, diploma, which is hanging on my wall. He was the provost at Towson during that time. But I'm very thankful for this opportunity, and it's not something that I'll, I won't take uh, take to heart to be a, a, a tremendous leader of this program. You know, I told the team this morning when I met with them, I'm not here to just build a winning football team. I'm here to build a winning football family. And the thing about family, as we all know, uh, that family name is something that people wear with pride. I know growing up in the southwest section of D.C., that when somebody said the name Loxley, oh, that's Brian and Eric Loxley. That Loxley name carried a lot of pride and respect. Uh, and as I told the team, our family name is Terrapins, Terps for short. And when people say it, I want them to say it with some respect. I want our players to be very prideful about that family name. And I want us to display and be the program we need to be to make the Terp name proud and successful. Being back home, being from the D.C. area, having spent time growing up, you know, I told the team every Sunday there are five teams that I check the scores for no matter where I am in the country. I always check the Washington Post to see how my Baloo Knights did. I always check the Baltimore Sun to see how my Towson Tigers did. And then I always check up on my Washington Redskins, which my favorite team growing up, the Maryland Terrapins, and then whoever I coach for. And it's important for me to have a great weekend, man. It's tough when you have a one in four weekend with all your teams that you love and you grew, uh, you, you grew fond of growing up. It's amazing. I've had 10 years of coaching here at the University of Maryland. I've worked under Ron Vanderlinden. I've worked under Ralph Friedgen. I've worked under Randy Etzel, spent a short time with DJ Durkin, and it's amazing how much I've learned and how much I've grown. You know, I feel like this is the place where I cut my teeth as a coach. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't thank all the great coaches, and I can't name them all because I'd forget somebody and then they'd be mad at me, but for all the coaches that I worked under as an assistant, I thank you for the opportunities that you guys gave me uh, to introduce me to such a great profession. You know, I talked about why I got into coaching. You know, I grew up in a home with a single mom that worked a lot. And those coaches at the Boys and Girls Club, the number four Boys and Girls Club down in Southwest, that Boys and Girls Club raised me, which is why the Boys and Girls Club has always been very true and dear to my heart. And it's amazing how those assistant coaches that give you a ride home, buy your cleats, uh, pick you up from school, uh, they become basically father figures for you. And when I knew I wasn't good enough to take football any further when I left Towson, I knew that I wanted to be a coach because of all the people that played a role in shaping me into becoming the man that I've become. So I want to thank all those coaches for what you guys have done to put me in this position to lead the new Maryland football family. I'm excited to lead this group of young men. You know, it's amazing, and I told the team how proud I was, man. I, I can remember as we were preparing to play Louisville on the first game of the year, and the Terps were playing Texas, and 
I'm in my hotel room with my Alabama coaching gear on, and I am watching the Terps just take it to Texas. And what passion, energy, toughness that this team played for and played with. And, man, it's a testament to Matt and all the coaches on this coaching staff how you guys were able to get these kids to play. So I'm not coming into a bare cupboard. I'm coming into a team that has – fight in them, that has the toughness and the characteristics that I feel like we can build on. And I can tell you this, my number one priority and focus will be in the health, development, and safety as the head of this family. Just like any family, as the leader of it, every decision I make with these kids will be made as if they were my own child. And that's not anything I take lightly. I'm proud of the way they came together and fought adversity after losing a brother in Jordan. I know what it's like to lose someone you love, having lost uh, my son Miko here. And just like Marty, Tanya, and this Maryland football family team support staff, it's not something that just goes away. It's a day-to-day -day fight. And I'm looking forward to fighting this battle with our team with Marty and Tanya, with my family, and with this football family to continue to honor our loved ones by putting out a great product on the field that these fans and our supporters can be really, really proud of. I want to create the right cultural environment and winning will follow. We have one of the best areas in the country for talent and we're going to work our tails off to keep it right here. Football has opened so many doors for me, providing me with role models and mentors, friendships, and people who've looked out for me. Being a coach is my opportunity to pay it forward. Thank you guys. Thank everyone who's come out today. I look forward to seeing everybody in Maryland Stadium next season supporting this team, this family. Thank you guys. Go Terps. I'm Emily Jambava. I work for the Washington Post. First, just logistically, how, how do you plan to balance the next few weeks with recruiting for Maryland and preparing Alabama for the playoff? Yeah, that's a great question, Emily. Um, first of all, luckily for me, I work for a guy that doesn't have a lot of surprises. There's not a, a lot of things that haven't been planned out in Coach Saban, and this isn't his first rodeo with dealing with a coach. Uh, having to prepare for a playoff game and working for another institution. So we have a schedule in place. You know, my plan is to be here uh, in Maryland, uh, probably most likely through next week, Thursday, Wednesday, uh, trying to, again, start the process of talking to the team first. You know, I plan on meeting with the team individually. I met with them collectively, meet with the assistant coaches that are here on staff, uh, and, and then start recruiting as well. Um, and then when I head back to Tuscaloosa next Thursday, we start practice Friday for our Oklahoma preparation. Um, you know, the thing, the way it's worked is I'll work on Oklahoma during the day, and when we practice and at night, I'll go in my office and put my Terp hat on and start recruiting for the Terps and getting the Terps ready for, the, for our season. I'm Barry Spurluger with Washington Post. Mike, you've had one head coaching opportunity in the past. I wonder what you learned at New Mexico from a situation that didn't go probably as you hoped. And Damon, your discussions with Mike about that experience as part of his development. Yeah, good question, Barry. Um, you know, I'm so far removed uh, from that New Mexico experience. Ten years removed, almost uh, ten years and two days from when I was introduced there. So. 
who I've become as a coach and who I've become as a person. Uh, as everyone else, you mature, you grow. I just spent three years saturated and winning under uh, Coach Nick Saban in the Alabama football program. Um, and it's my goal to basically take the experiences that I've had as a coach, not just at New Mexico, but at every stop along the way, take what I've learned from being under Coach Saban and his process and find a way to create that uh, environment here with our football family. And just to follow up to that, uh, Barry, obviously Mike and I did have a, a extended conversation about it uh, in life. Uh, we talked about his past. He's grown as an individual. Uh, I saw that. Uh, he indicated what he had learned. And you could just see in him uh, where he was then, which was eight to ten years ago, to where he is now. Uh, He's had a lot of life lessons, as we all have, well vetted, and I could not be more proud than to have him sitting right next to me on this stage. Heather Dennis with ESPN. Mike, aside from coming home and your familiarity with the area, why did you want to tackle this project? Well, Heather, um as I said in my opening comments, this has been a dream job for me from the day I got into coaching. Um, I grew up in this environment, this community. Uh, as you know, this DMV community is very prideful and we root hard for our home teams. And I grew up worshiping and loving the Terps. Um, when I got into coaching, this was the one job that I always coveted. and. Uh, I've spent 10 years of my coaching career here. I've seen the good, bad, and ugly of Maryland. I've had an opportunity to win a conference championship here. I was part of winning 30 games in three years uh, during the early 2000s under Coach Freegen. So I, I, I have a vision and picture in my mind what it felt like and what it looked like uh, when we accomplished those goals as a team. And I know it can be done again. I know it'll take some hard work, it'll take some great effort, it'll take this community getting behind the program and the players in this area staying home and developing that sense of pride back and wearing a Turk jersey. Uh, I love building, I'm a builder by nature, and uh, this is a great opportunity and the timing was just perfect for me now. Mike, uh, Peter Schmuck from the Baltimore Sun, over this way. Okay. Hi. Um, could you speak specifically about your experience with Nick Saban and some of the things specifically that you feel has helped you grow as a coach? Well, we'd need about a three-hour course because uh, I've been there for three years, and every day I've got, I'm a big copious note taker, and uh, I couldn't even start to tell you, but I think the number one thing, it starts with consistency. If you look at the Alabama football program, it has consistency written all over it. I know every day at 7.25 to 26, Nick Saban's going to pull up. He's going to walk up the stairs. He'll be at his desk by 7.30. He'll be in his conference room. Uh, we're going to have a 10.30 staff meeting every day. We're going to go through. So his regimen and his consistency of how he went about the program, I think the biggest thing that I've learned uh, from being under Coach Saban is focus on the process, not the results. Um, don't worry about game day. Don't look up at the scoreboard. Let's win every day and maximize every opportunity within your program. If it's a staff meeting, be where your feet are. Be in that staff meeting. Let's make sure we maximize that time. Um, the man is amazing in terms of his preparation. There's nobody that works harder than Nick Saban. Uh, he works, and the ex expectation he has on us as a staff starts with him, and he sets a great example, and I've learned that. Um, I've learned that discipline, toughness, effort are really, really important characteristics in building a winning team. And I also realized that uh, and from, from being with Coach, how important the family environment is. And that's, to me, what we want to do and how we want to build this program. DC. Mike, um, you're not only building a program on the field, but obviously what they've been through, what this school's been through the last six months, you're having to rebuild that as well. Was there any trepidation in coming here and your relationship with the McNairs? How did that play into this? 
um, you know, I, I can only really speak triple on, on moving forward uh, and what my plans are to develop and build this football family. Um, this was the job I've coveted since the day I put a whistle around my neck as a coach. Uh, you know, some people grow up wanting to be the head coach at the University of Alabama, Michigan, all the story programs. Uh, for Locks, this was it. And when the opportunity presented itself for me to have a, to, the ability to come here and be the leader of this family, uh, there was nothing that could stop me from wanting to take this job other than confirming that all the pieces were in place for this program, this family to be successful. And after meeting with Dr. Lowe, meeting with Damon, meeting with the, the search committee, I really felt comfortable that everyone was pulling in the right direction, pulling together to see this thing through the tough times. Um, you know, my relationship with Marty and, and Tanya, uh, you know, again, it, it started even before uh, Jordan's passing. Um, my daughter attended McDonough High School with Jordan and they graduated in the same class. They both signed their national letters on the same day, Corey with Auburn, obviously Jordan with Maryland. Um, I started the recruiting process before I left on Jordan, but for Marty and myself and Tanya and Kia, you know, we have a common bond, man, that when you lose a child, the circle of life isn't built for parents to bury kids. And so um, I have been a sounding board for Marty. He's been an ear for me. Our relationship has continued to grow. And for him to be here today just means the world to me and my family uh, to see me take the reins of this football family. Uh, Coach, first of all, uh, Bruce Posner from Red Turtle and CBS Radio. Uh, welcome back. And how does it feel to have such tremendous support from Terrapin Nation? You, you know, the, between the fans, the boosters, even some of the media, how does that feel to you to be wanted so much to come back here? Well, it's, it's, it's what I have come to expect. It's what I know. Um, as I said before, being a fabric of this community growing up and being a part of this community, this is what you come to expect. Uh, this DMV, this Terrapin sports family, this one Maryland is all about supporting each other. Um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a loss for words of what the support. I mean, the high school coaches that are in here, the former players, the support staff that I've grown to know over the years, uh, to see that everybody come together as one to uh, fight to make this program become the special program that I dream of it to become and have all this support and help is just, it's amazing and it's something that I want to use to help bring this thing together to make it a special place. Hi, Tracy Wilkins of NBC4 in Washington. I know that uh, you were talking, Coach, about looking forward to the future, but I do want to ask you, after working with Coach Durkin, were you surprised by allegations of a toxic culture? And what was in your heart when you watched what this program was going through? Again, I, I can really only comment on um, where I see this program going forward. Uh, you know, it's my goal to build this thing into a football family. And with family, the words that come to mind to me are trust, respect, discipline. Um, and with any family, there's always going to be issues that come up. And, you know, the number one thing for me, just like being a father in the family, is ensuring that every decision I make moving forward as the leader of this family will put the health, welfare, and safety of the students first like I would my own children. And that's really easy to do because as a parent, uh, when you've got to make decisions and when you've got to uh, make tough decisions, the ones I make here, I'm going to make it as if each kid and each decision I make is dealing with my own children. And so I I'm excited uh, about the future here. I'm excited about moving the program forward uh, together with the Terrapin Nation and all the supporters that have come here today. 
coach, uh, center field, Dave Preston, WTOP Radio. Welcome aboard. Uh, first, uh, lessons that you learned as interim coach uh, when you took over for Randy Edsel, and looking forward to the Big Ten East, a meat grinder of division uh, of a division. What is it about competing in that division that challenges you? What is uh, the challenges ahead for you? Well, I think if I remember the first time when I took over as the interim, uh, you know, the first thing I remember writing down was have fun with it. Um, and that's going to be important to me. These kids that come into this football family, it's going to be important that they love being here and being a part of the program that we put together. Um, probably didn't have the success I would have liked to have had when I took over as the interim, but I do feel like we gave those seniors, those guys that were playing their last few games as Terps, the opportunity to go out and enjoy uh, football and, and, and have fun with being a Terp. Um, as far as playing in the Big Ten East, I mean, it, it's, it is one of the best conferences, best leagues uh, in all of college football. Tremendous challenge. But I also know that our first year here, we beat some teams in that league. Uh, I remember beating Michigan at Michigan, having Iowa here and beating them at home, having an opportunity to go up to Penn State and, and win a big game there. Uh, so... I know this, we're excited about the challenge and the opportunity that playing on this side and playing in this league has to offer us. I know this, if we keep the gates around the DMV and we get the top players in this area to buy in, to staying here at home and building this thing from the ground up together, there's nowhere in the country we can't go and compete with the best. So excited about this opportunity. Great, great opportunity for us. I'm sorry if you've answered this somewhere else already, but where are you at in terms of hiring a staff, coordinators, and what's your ideal timetable for having it complete? Yeah, you know, Heather, that's one thing that, you know, having gone through this before, you know, that's not something that I'm going to take lightly. Well, I've got to do a good job and do my due diligence and bring in the best possible coaches, support staff, and people to surround this team with. Um, for me, there's five things I look for in a coach. Uh, they got to be great communicators. They got to be good scheme guys, great recruit recruiters, great evaluators of talent, and then most first and foremost, they got to be great mentors. So, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to meet with each and every individual coach on the staff. Try to uh, meet with those guys here in the next few days. Uh, I do have some thoughts in mind of some guys that I would love to have joint have come join me here, but I'm going to take my time with it to make sure I get it right so that I can give our players the best possible coaching staff and support staff uh, and first-class experience that they can have here as being uh, Terps. One last thing for me. I, I was, uh, I, I get this opportunity. I like this, uh, this little presser here because I didn't have to answer any questions except one, Mike. Uh, but the last thing that I'd like to do, I'd like to present you something on behalf of the Maryland family and welcome you officially as the new head coach. So you are the number one and the leader of our program. 